wasn't in the middle of a game, right? Yeah, that's something. It seems to be whenever I change scenes, it's just like, no, no, you can't do that, what are you doing? I'm supposed to be IT support and I can't fix this, like, whatever. It's, it's, it's eSports, How vehicle dare technology. You. How dare you? Oh, okay, well, I tried to kill eSports, I tried to destroy the StarCraft Brood War scene single-handedly, but ah, uh, it looks like I wasn't effective enough. The power of passion and uh, the the Brood War community has saved it once again. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll have to you know, work even harder to show good esports uh, death for, for my fans, uh, so that they'll cheer for me uh, to crash kicks this stream more often. Yeah, now uh, one thing, we're going to be moving in to a uh, PVZ. I know it said Ghost is Zerg, but he's actually Protoss, so I'll fix that very, very quickly. And then when we go back here, just like Magic, it'll all be fixed. So we're going to have a CVP here between Ghost for White Clan. I uh, did a pretty good job last round. Now, William, uh, well, that was actually his round one stats. No, it wasn't. Wait, I'm confused. It's all good. We're fine. Ghost is a pretty good Protoss player. He's going to be up against Bolt Team's Willian. Now, Willian hasn't actually played yet in the SCPL, so it's going to be his debut match. And it's going to be over here on Benzene. Now, if you watched ASL 2 and ASL 3, you may remember this map from there. Uh, but it was also used back in 2010 for the Shinhan Bank Pro League space platform map. And it's a really cool two-player map with the uh, spawns in the top right and bottom left. Yeah, I feel like you really just uh, completely analyzed the, the entire map right there, Kix. It's yeah. uh, you know, uh, diagonally symmetric uh, as opposed to rotationally symmetric. So you're going to get kind of the same thing on one side as you will on the other. Actually, wait, no, it's rotationally symmetric, not diagonally symmetric. <gasps> Whew, wow, I was almost geometrically inconsistent. <laughs> yeah, I was I was trying to work that one out. I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. But either way, uh, we're gonna head into our fourth game of the series with Bull Up two to one against White. It's Ghost versus William. And starting us off here in the top right hand position, we do have the Cream Zerg fighting for Bull, currently on match point. It's Willian. Yep, and his opponent in the bottom left in the purple, fighting for a white clan, is Ghost. Who is, once again, not in the white color, so terrible for casters everywhere. But uh, it's a ZVP, so we're really getting some diversity here today, Kix. Yeah, this is probably one of the most diverse. But, you know, I mean, round one was pretty much 90% PvP. Uh, just because all the teams had like a roster of like 10 Protoss players and one Zerg, but now in round three, the teams have really diversified. We've seen a lot of pickups from various members of the StarCraft community. I know in um, in one of the threads on TL, the one about the IRK promo movie, uh, there was a little bit of argument going on between Eon Zerg, who now plays for Naz, and IRK's Age, who made the video, but also is the clan leader of IRK, and this was over Marwin, uh, a Terran, joining the ranks of IRK. So lots of players being picked up, lots of players moving around uh, between teams, a lot of older teams coming back as well, and a lot of teams just really bolstering their strength. Yeah, I, there's a, a lot of cool moves happening. Maybe there's a, a mini roster apocalypse happening uh, before STPL round three. Uh, I still can't keep track of who's on which team because it changes so frequently. But uh, Maybe I'll get the hang of it one of these days. Yeah, I mean, if you ever need to know what the uh, IRK roster is, do go and check out the new video uh, that IRK Age has it, made. It's super it's sick. really cool, yeah. <laughs> like, I thought uh, I had yeah, the... Uh, I was going to say, I thought I had the monopoly on being the only person outside of Korea making StarCraft videos, and then he just topped everything I've ever made, so... Way to make me feel insignificant, Aggie, but great work. Actually, I think there's an old uh, Micromedia uh, clan VOD from way back in the day that does like a team intro. And there's all those Team Liquid team intros yeah. that uh, are, are kind of balling. So, yeah, back in the day, man, in, in the, uh, the glory days of StarCraft, if you can call them that, they're pretty great now. Back in the day, clans would like come out with these like baller videos, with, like really, uh, you know, 
like bad video editing from like the 1990s and you're just like oh my god our clan is so much cooler because we have a video um yeah. there's a really there's a really cool one uh there's a bunch for like uh, super smash brothers melee as well back in the old day uh, they used to have clans or crews that would uh would get their own videos and those were also super sick and they all kind of kind of came out right around the same time So my, my the moral of the story is if you're in a clan and you don't have a cool video really well, yeah. what are you doing with your yeah life? exactly i mean going back to the game just a second we do have three hatch before gas uh, gas comes up as that third hatchery starts in the bottom right we saw a forge into nexus into gateway with no cannon uh, so a little bit of a risky play coming out from ghosts but he did scout that the links were very very late uh, so overall a pretty good build for him he's going to be feeling pretty good about the uh, opening of this game how dare you talk about what's happening on the screen kicks uh, uh, thank you for that excellent summary uh it is really going to highlight the fact that uh william is just kind of balling out of control at this point he's got he's got drones uh in one base he's got drones in another base and uh soon at that third base he will also have more drones <laughs> And currently, he's only got four lings out on the map to protect those drones. So, uh, I mean, that'll, that'll be fine for now, but it, it, only because it was a uh, you know forge, you know, fast expand on the other side, which doesn't really put you in a lot of a position to you know play aggressively, aside from like cannon rushing a base or something. Yeah, and I mean, cannon rushing actually pretty popular on this map, especially behind the bottom right minerals. But we don't see Ghost with a scout down there just yet, so he doesn't know that third hatchery is up. Uh, but he should know that something is up. He saw the very late gas, he sees no lair, and he sees a very small link count. So uh, Ghost should be aware of what's going on. Looks like he's going to go and confirm it, just to be sure. Uh, I know I can count, I can't even count on many, many hands. How many games I've lost, assuming one thing, and then losing to someone else. So that's something that Ghost wants to check. And he's going to assume now, at least. Uh, he's not seen it, but he saw the lings run down there to try and block the probe, and he's just going to pull the probe back and go home. Yep, pulling it back, and that's really going to be the end of basically all vision uh, that White has for right now. Uh, I, I, I'm wa watching the eggs as they pop, and it's just nothing but drones coming out. It's drones at every base. Drones one place. Drones the other place. I'm pretty sure the only attacking units are still those four Zerg things <laughs> out on the wait. map. So. Oh, wait, what the f Yeah, Queen's Will Nest and Evo Chamber. No Hydralist in. He is playing an incredibly... Incredibly this is dangerous the style. Greediest Zerg player I have ever seen in my life kicks. It's like three hatch, not quite before pool, but basically the fastest three hatches you can get. And then the only attacking units he built are four Zerglings. There's three Zealots that come out that could literally win the game because there's so little to defend on the other side of the map. Yeah. Just now, a creep colony being put down. Yeah, the trouble is he's actually not got any hydralists so he's not going to be able to deal with the corsairs either so his overlords gonna be sitting ducks for the time being maybe if he can get this spore colony out in time he'll be able to defend them looks like it will finish uh, but with those three zealots going to the bottom right i mean he's going into a fourth hatchery behind this as well and there's still not a hydralist and there's still more drones what is... being built what he's... does william expect to happen like does he think his opponent just forgot that he could build attacking units like, this is four Zerglings versus three Zealots. Uh, you know, I may not know a whole lot about Brood Warrior Kicks, but I uh, I feel fairly confident that is uh, a slight mismatch. Yeah, I mean, this is quite possibly the greediest I've ever seen a single Zerg play. He does have some links now. Uh, speed has just finished up, so maybe he's going to be able to hold on to this, but... I mean, I guess the one thing that's coming in here is the Corsair didn't get that much scouting information, didn't get any Overlords, uh, from what I can tell, no, did get one. Uh, but maybe if he can hold on here, he might be able to do something. I mean, Queen's Nest is up. He's not doing anything with it. He's actually got some uh, drones that are idle at the moment. He's not really able to control everything. Yeah, there's four drones that are just like totally dead in the main. They're just chilling. They've been there for a long time. These are like four like Cadenzi trader drones that are just uh, there for moral support, I guess. Uh, but they've wow. been put to work, press ganged into servitude. Uh, but now we have to see how many overlords die because there's absolutely no anti-air except for that one spore. 
I mean, the one thing that I just saw there, and one thing that really surprises me, is not only is he building a load more drones again, he's adding a second evolution chamber before a Hydralisk end. He is going full on... I mean, Crazy Zerg is straight into Ultralisks, and he's getting melee upgrades. He is going into if Ultras. It, at this point, if Ghost had built nothing but scouts, oh my God, he could DT. win the game. DT in the bottom right. This is so, so bad. This oh, wow. It's overlords. actually going to kill everything. Yeah. This... Okay, well, surprisingly, uh, William, a player that has built no detection uh, aside from Overlords, is now going to have trouble dealing oh with the DT. Oh my god, he saves the hatchery! It had six health and kills the DT with only drones and the All sunkens. Right, there's, there's no justice in the world. Evil prevails. No, no, Nothing good will ever triumph. Uh... You might as well just go to your nearest bank and just make a five finger withdrawal. Like, I, 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 there's just there's nothing there's nothing to stop the the spread of darkness across our universe. The crazy thing is, is anything that could possibly go right for William has gone right. The stars have aligned in this game for him to be able to play this greatly. What is the first unit that he's going to build, Kix? Like, like, what is he? Other what does than he go a for? Ling. I guess it'll be Scourge, because he's adding the Spire on. I mean, we've got three Overlords popping. Still no Queens, though, so not going for that drone style. Well, I mean, he is going for a drone style, but in a completely different way. He's building nothing but drones. I mean, there's crazy Zerg, and then there's, like, crazy, crazy, insane, super mental Zerg. Like, what What are you supposed to... Like, what are you supposed to call this? I mean, this is, like, like comatose Zerg. This is just, like... Like, I, I don't know what you call this. There's just no signs of life at all from our Zerg player. He knows how to build buildings and a few Zerglings, but not many. Yeah, now the problem is he is going to be up against Storm. That has now finished. He's adding on another hatchery as natural. He's going to be building a lot of stack defense. He has to hold on for as long as humanly possible. I mean, first macro is absolutely insane right now. He's on six gateways, or five gateways even. I apparently can't count basic maths. Uh, but with five gateways, that's going to be a lot of units heading towards William's base. And against a, a player that doesn't really have that much, his attack upgrade isn't quite finished on his Lings. And you know one thing that's good against Lings? It's Storm. Oh my god, he's uh, going to drop reference. it. Adrenal will finish before a Zergling has touched a Protoss building. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to how, how it's supposed to work, uh, Kix. Um, okay, so uh, this is going to be the attempt at taking out the bottom right-hand base for reals this time. It still only has 50 HP. There's no Defilers, no Dark Swarm, and only Lings to defend. Now, these are Adrenalings, so they will kill units very quickly, but... And they've got 1-1 as well. I mean, it's 1-1 one, one for our Protoss player as well, but Storm absolutely shreds Lings. And that's so yeah. much damage. Yeah, and boom goes the Dynamite. There we go. All the Lings go down, or at least half of them. The base survives, though, so... I mean... The base survives, though. There we go. I got it right the second time. <laughs> um, somehow, 68 HP is, is up is the only direction the health on this hatchery can go. Yeah, there we go. It looks like we're going to have Lings trying to push in to cancel out this Nexus. Not going to be able to do it, but we see a Robo facility being added immediately for uh, Ghost. He's going to go into Reavers from this, most likely. He's going to allow him to defend a little bit better against the eventual Ultras, but I mean... There's still no Ultra this cavern, so this is going to be nothing but Lings. To and just drop Adrenaline as well. drop the main already. Get it over with. That's what put, he's going to do. Put Ghost out of his memory, uh, misery. Like, we, we all know where this game is going, and it is all Protoss things in the universe dying uh, to a swarm of Cracklings. Yeah, and I mean, there's, there's so many Cracklings on this map at the moment. Willian. Has so many drones mining so many minerals, he can't actually afford to spend them all. He doesn't have enough hatcheries, and he's using all of his lava really efficiently as well. So, I mean, one thing about this style he's doing is obviously Zerglings are very hard to control when you have so many of them. And I mean, this Protoss, Protoss ball is just getting more and more powerful. But that Protoss ball is in the middle for? of the map. Why, why is there a Spire on the map at this point, Kate? I think there was two Scourge at one point, which killed the Corsair. <laughs> and that was it. 
<laughs> and, and then to counter the ability to ever make Scourge again, he just never built any Scour Corsairs. But now here comes the Doom Drop, right? Oh There's God. nothing to stop this. There's four Overlords that completely jam-packed full of Cracklings, and there's no Protoss units anywhere near the main. Or yeah. natural. They're going in for an all-in counter-attack here. He knows he's likely going to lose his main Nexus. He doesn't really care. He's going to have his reinforcements eventually. But look how quickly these buildings are dying rapid. That's so... There's no Dark Swarm. Why is there no Dark Swarm? This is an army of almost exclusively Dragoons. Like, yeah. there's maybe, like, less than 10 Zealots in this army. And it's all Dragoon. Uh, okay, man. Uh, well, everything's going to die for the Protoss player for sure, but the Zerg is actually not moving any of the Zerglings. So you might want to try to kill all of your opponent's production right now because you can. Uh, but I, I guess William is a merciful god and has decided not to actually use his Zerglings in the opposing base uh, to kill anything. Yeah, he's been so worried about trying to control absolutely everything. We see another creep colony coming in. Sunken at the back. He's got lings all over the place, but can't send them in anywhere. He's just got so many idle lings all over. And I think that's what it's going to be for William. It's going to be all over for him, as Ghost is just doing so, so much damage. Wait, if he ever decides to move the, the lings that are in uh, Ghost's main... Uh, there we go. All right. Now we're killing stuff. The lings move up and they will eventually kill off all of these gateways. To, to describe the number of gateways left on the map after these go down, it will be one. Uh, one gateway. So realistically, even though everything in the main will die for William, he's, his opponent won't be able to build units. Yeah, but neither can William. So... He's lost all of his tech buildings. He can't actually build anything out of his three hatcheries. So, I mean... He's, he's getting a spawning pool. Zerglings are all he's built all game kicks. Yeah, we need to build the Ultra Cabin, but didn't actually manage to build any before everything died. So, a little bit unfortunate for William. I mean, he's still trying to hold on. He's still trying to get the best possible engagements. It's 2-1 upgrades against 2-2, two, two, but with this Archon in here, uh, that's going to be very, very powerful. Now, William actually just added on a ton of drones because he wanted to spend his lava. But if it had waited a little bit, he may have been able to get a lot more lings. Why Why would you build drones when you're on one base? Uh, and you have 2k minerals as well. Yeah, I don't know if drones are what you need right now, my dude. Uh, I think that thing called a defiler, maybe... Uh, ooh, yeah, that would be a, that'd be a good one. Um... Well, he definitely couldn't build those. He's miles off ahead. Yeah, no. <laughs> no defilers will be built this game, which is not a sentence I say very often. One storm wins the game, and that's going to do it. Damn. Yeah, there's nothing William can do now. He's going to try and like, maybe move his drones away. But what's he going to do? I mean, he's got links. He's going to be running into so many cannons. GG. Ghost takes down William and ties us up 2-2. Two to two. I don't know if maybe there's like a like a like an ice bucket challenge or something that William was doing like the ghost of William's song like infiltrated this guy's psyche and was like this is the way you play brood War. uh so so I don't know like did he lose a bet was there a double dog dare I don't know but the build only zergling strategy uh might want to take that one back retool it a little bit and bring it yeah. back in a future STPL but you know what? That's going to take us into an ace match. So our first game of round three is going to an ace match, and it's with White Clan in it as well. So kind of crazy that Bullet managed to pull it this far. Maybe in another universe that build could have worked first. Nearly died to the counter, like the Ling Drop counter. So if, uh, I, I mean, realistically, if William had managed to control his Lings a little bit better, maybe that would have been a different situation. But we're going to head on over to the ace match.